<laughs> hey everyone, it's Sasher. Uh, we are back with some good friends, Justin Bedekere from the CEO of Rays and Jamie Catcher who runs their New York office to talk again about the office of the future. And I've known Justin since the very beginning of Sasher. We used to have a great co-working space. He found us the co-working space. I, I invested in this company after he did. And Rays is very interesting. It is a hybrid technology and brokerage for commercial real estate, for some of the best, for some of the best, for the notion, um, uh, and, and many of the better top leaders. Why Combinator? Give me a few other great fun brands, Justin, throw a few in. Oh my gosh. Envoy, Airtable. Envoy. Airtable. I've heard of that one. That's a good one. Like many of the um, best, most iconic tech companies. Pa you know, Palantir. Palantir. I've heard of that one. Have you, <laughs> especially, and what we're going to talk about is the new world. They have both pre and post all of this use raise to previously fine, but now design and manage these hybrid offices. And now that we're coming to the end of this, um, at least the end of this version, we're all rethinking the office. And personally, I even think this idea, and we'll debate this now for a minute, I think the mm -hmm. hybrid office even is a dead idea. Now we're all distributed teams going to the office, like in many cases going to the office, even little team <laughs> Sasser, we went from one to two offices. Now we have SF and Palo Alto, more and more startups I talk to have radically changed what a headquarters is, but actually have more offices and more needs to meet up in different fashions um, than they did uh, before all of this. And, um, you know, Ray's was on an incredible tear with the best tech names we had. We had a few hits when in, in 2020, but now are back stronger and stronger and expanding across the country, right? And, and, right. and, and Jamie and Justin have worked together, at least informally in the past, and is now is joined to run New York. So I want to use this for a couple things, but to, to peer behind the scenes with different tech centers, with New York, uh, with San Francisco, maybe with Austin, Miami, and others from Great. these guys. And also mm -hmm. they have data. Everyone on Twitter, I think, talks out of their rear on this. Um, they talk about how beautiful the park is in San Francisco on the two nice days. They talk about crime. They talk about how great Miami is. They talk about how Miami is all dudes and, and retirees. Like, I just can't, the, the Twitter is not helpful to the, to this debate. Am I, do you guys agree? Yes. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first let's slow down. Let's talk about geographies. But the first mm -hmm. one, cause I, it's probably the only thing that Justin and I have slightly in, in, in good sense disagreed with over the last 24 months is SOMA. And yep. uh, I walk, the Bay Area, I think is great. I mean, we have a little office in Palo Alto, you have one too. And it, it's so fun and dynamic. And I think it's better than when I was running Echo Sign Adobe Sign there. But right. I remember goodness, that office that you guys were in. It was cool, but it is tumbleweeds in Soma. Slack <laughs> just left, right? Salesforce may not go back. Are you, is Soma going to come back? Is Soma really going to come back for tech? What, do you, what okay. are you seeing? So, so let's unpack that a little yeah. bit. Slack is coming back and Salesforce is coming back in a big way. Um, you know, they, okay. uh, they actually did something super interesting recently in Scotts Valley. They have that like, you know, retreat center for yep. a lot of the distributed team to go to. Um, in that same story, um, you know, I think it was their head of people or our CMO had mentioned that most of their employees will be back to the office three day, about three days a week. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, we definitely agree, disagree on, on SOMA. Let me, let me um, hit you. But you have the data. So it's, this is, I'm not saying I'm right. I just know what I see. It's, I've never totally. seen anything and like SOMA today, is, right? It is reality, right? Like the, yeah. the occupancy level in San Francisco is the lowest of any major city. Um, but let me, let me throw some data at you. So yes. In, um, uh, you know, we would all say that 2019 was the peak of the office market. Couldn't find it, anything. Couldn't find anything, right? It was impossible, right? You know, er, like every company was trying to lease everything, right? It was like buying a used um, car today. It went over, used, used cars were going over list price for real commercial real estate totally, in 2019, totally. right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and in SOMA, as, as we define it, apples to apples yeah. to what I'm about to share, um, 8.2 million square feet of office was leased. Okay. Um, in 2020, that sunk down below six. In yeah. 2021, it was 9.6 million square feet. A huge jump from the peak. And over the last 10 years has averaged around 10. So we're almost to the top average of some of the most you know, um, active markets in one of the most important markets in the world. And that's just in SOMA. So, and okay. So, so, so let me sure I understand that. Yep. There's obviously a lot of, there's record vacancy because it's the lowest, it has the lowest occupancy of any major city in the U.S., but the amount of new space that was leased by new tech, probably primarily tech, right? 
Yep. Primarily in 2021 tag. is running at as high a rate as it was in 2019 or approaching it. It, it well over. Oh, um, well over. Okay. Yeah. And so, but, but occupancy is still, you know, around occupancy. 20 to 25%. Okay. And, and so I think that there's a lot of factors that go into that, right? I mean, uh, San Francisco is a special snowflake in, in many ways. Um, but, uh, you know, um, it's had the most stringent mask policies that that went away a couple of days ago. Yep. And, you know, we could tell you in, in the Ray's office, which is kind of near Jackson Square, you know, a really nice area. Um, I mean, finding, building, managing office spaces is our life's work. Yes. And when mask policies were in place, like no one wanted to go in and spend eight hours, 10 hours with a mask. That went off and our office just exploded with energy and everyone rushed back. Um, and so I think we're gonna see that. Um, big tech, you know, that um, Apple, Salesforce, Facebook, Meta, um, you know, Slack, um, all of these companies are kind of targeting over the next couple months, but by April, they will all be back. Um, and the, the energy and, and the activity is going to just be night and day. Okay. Um, you know, for Slack, you saw in the headline, they gave up that big, you know, 200,000 square feet. Well, the, the story didn't say that, like, that was spillover space to their normal headquarters at 500 Howard, which they are keeping. And they just got, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. And so they have this 500 building. Howard's that really pretty building they have, right? That's right at the yeah, that, they're, so they're keeping, keeping that. that. Yeah. I yeah. And have redesigned it to make it, you know, community based and whatnot. And then they also, in that corner, as you know, it's like Salesforce, you know, park and Salesforce corner, like yeah. they, they have so much space. So, so you know, um, uh, the, the headlines are not really telling the whole story. You know, sales, uh, Salesforce themselves put up one of their, uh, half of their building at 350 Mission. Sephora took a huge chunk of that. So like all of this space is like kind of, there's so many opportunities to like take really amazing space, yep. um, fully furnished out. Um, but yeah, like the, the data tells a different story, not on the occupancy, like what you see is reality. Like there's not that many people around. Um, but mm -hmm. that's why these next few months are going to be so big as we like enter the new phase of this. And we kind of look at what happened, you know, in the rear view mirror. Um, there's just going to be a lot of energy. There's not a lot of fear. Um, you, you can actually like freely walk around and, and see each other's faces and emotions and energy. And that makes yep. a big difference. Let me ask one related question and then, and then let's get, let's talk a little bit about other geographies and, and Jamie can help, but yeah, sure. So what you just said, Facebook, Salesforce, th those are great. Those are iconic names, but they're also my dad's startup, right? I mean, I, I don't mean that literally, but, um, what, what I don't know, what two things that are interesting. One is like during like the peak of all this, I think you, you closed a big lease for notion. I remember that, right. When yep. things were like the worst they were right. But notion, which I think of as a, the most classic example of a company that could be truly remote, right. at least a massive, super slick, classic brick, I probably brick and timber kind of thing we all <laughs> dreamed about, right? From the movies. Is that happening though? And, and related to that are, one thing that I'm not sure is happening when I, certainly when I started investing is so many founders from the rest of the world coming to San Francisco because Salesforce and Facebook are yeah. already here and that's enough to fill up the offices. But I, mean, I don't know yeah. if the folks from Belgium and France and Mexico are going to come to San Francisco the way they used to. I mean, um, there, there's two very distinct issues to talk about there. So like yep. immigration and attracting the world's best talent. I think that like there, I think that if, if thinking about positive sum, like more places are going to attract, you know, uh, international um, uh, talent. And I think yep. Bay Area will still be one of them. But like, you know, I mentioned a lot of big tech, right? But let's look at like, you know, um, uh, like iconic, high growth, really revered brands like Figma took yep. down a massive office. Figma is a great example. So uh, Figma. You know, uh, but hold on, let's uh, just stop there because that's a great one. Because yeah. for every for every company that leaves the Bay Area, there's a thousand unicorns, right? Mm -hmm. So if just enough unicorns stay in San Francisco, they could actually absorb all the real estate because we're only building so much, right? Totally. So like, why does a Figma, although Figma wasn't, Figma is such a great company, it wasn't founded yesterday, right? It's probably 10 years old, but why, yep. what was in Figma's mind? Why did they decide to lease a massive office in the middle of all, midst of all of this? Yeah, I mean, because they know that um, connect, you know, the connectivity, like the importance of bringing people together, yep. they publish publicly like an amazing, you know, new kind of look on, on how we work. 
um, you know, Chime, right? Like you know, high growth fintech company. Yeah, they so had a huge over, lease, right? Huge, right? Over 200,000 square feet. So, um, yeah. You know, and, and like, and then you look at like the companies like Loom that are, uh, or, you know, one of our clients, Brex, that are creating these amazing cafe spaces yeah. that are like, um, you know, uh, perks rather than like, you know, um, hubs that you have to go into. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, Thumbtack is actually designing like a library. So they're going opposite. They're like, you only do focus work here. You know, so it like a lot of companies, a lot of really amazing creative companies, a lot of unicorns are going to be experimenting. Yeah. But what they do know is that, um, you know, that it is just so important to, to, to create that connectivity, whether it's every day, a few times a day, a few times a week, or even a few times a year where like yep. offsites or onsites become the new offsites. So let's, um, I want to talk about New York, but just, you, you had a couple it's, iconic it's, brands there I want to press in. Sorry, we'll, Jamie, we'll get there next. No, but, I, 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 this is, this is all good. This is great. But like Brex is a fun one. Enrique and Sam do a lot with Saster, right? So when, when all of this hit, the co-founders of Brex moved to Southern California, right? right? And the sales team that Sam runs, which was the largest area, they're all distributed. Sam lives in Miami. He's coming to yeah. our Miami meetup shortly. But they're having a huge in-person presence. So what is that? Like, I think that's maybe one of the more radical ones, more radical than Figma, right? How are, what have you learned? How are they thinking about using this space um, when they went from overnight to massively in-person to very distributed? Like, what's yeah, in there, what, so, what are they trying to get out of this? So, so the, you know, like, you know, hybrid actually is starting to kind of get a, almost like feel like a negative word or something. It's just a spectrum of how people want to run their companies. Yeah. Um, uh, with Brex, they're remote first, kind of like Coinbase and, and others where like everything that it takes to run the company, how they communicate, everything is done digitally, right? Um, yes. You know, through through all the different channels, whether it's async, sync, whatever. Um, and so the, the places that they're creating um, are, are, are to bring people together when they want to come, have like a very like, you know, uh, collaborative kind of just in-person fun, fun experience. They're not there to kind of do head sound work similar to Dropbox that like you only go into these spaces to like meet up with other people or clients or whatever. Yep. And so there's like certain people that like want that, um, often, uh, but like they see it as when we have a higher concentration, a higher density of employees, like we want to be able to bring them together in like really kind of fun, you know, collaborative spaces. Um, but we, we don't want um, there to be this kind of feeling of like, you know, um, um, first and second class citizens, depending on like whether you're in office or remote. And so that's like, a big topic. Maybe we can get to in a minute. The citizen thing is something we've, we've all had to figure out now, right? Totally. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I think it's like, they're all, we're going to experiment like crazy over the next few years, which is going to be unbelievably fascinating and exciting. Um, and then, you know, uh, learning like what, um, you know, companies like Airtable or Figma or Loom, which are also doing those kind of creative, like, you know, um, hubs, but like you're, they're not designed to just kind of go heads down work. Um, and, um, you know, there's not going to be a one size fits all, but I think we're going to learn such amazing things coming out of this. Um, you know, but from the headlines to like the reality, uh, you know, even companies as big as, you know, Google and Meta are expecting the vast majority of their employees to come at least a few days a week. Yep. Okay. One last question on Soma. And then Jamie, I do want to talk about New York Great. and maybe if we can Atlanta, Miami, Austin, cool. because they all have different sure. experiences. Right. But okay. A mistake we all make. And Justin, I know you're biased, but be unbiased, speak from data. Let's say I'm a CEO and I've raised a couple million, 10 million, a hundred million, whatever dollars. Yep. And I'm not, I, wa I want an office in San Francisco, but I'm in no rush. Okay. Like I'm at home. When, when is it all going to be gone? Because it always happens like capacity. You think there's all this capacity and then you cross a line and there's nothing, right? Totally. This is both residential, commercial, used cars. Like we can pick a lot of assets. That, that have this, the, the, the elasticity is very strange, isn't it? And it hits you like whiplash, yeah. right? Realistically, when would you say you should be getting an office before everyone figures out they want an office? Don't tell me yeah. it's too late because that doesn't help. When, when is that date <laughs> when you're going to be, in, when you sat on the sidelines too long? <laughs> as objectively yeah. as possible um, yeah. over, over the next three months. And yeah. I say that because like, 
you know, it's a little bit before a lot of other, a lot of the big tech and big offices are going to be repopulated. Yeah. Um, there's a good amount of subleases. Um, and you have to bet that like the, the, you know, you, you can't get away with like, you know, locking things down again. And so like, this is like the most confidence you can have about things staying open and let us moving on. Um, but there's still good opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. People are going to start getting more and more FOMO as like, you know, yeah. you walk around the streets and there's every, like, you know, the shops and the sandwich spots are the coffee shops are open. Um, I'm really, really bullish that, um, you know, it's going to get really exciting towards the second half of this year. Yeah. So, so leave something by this by the so, summer at the latest if you want a cool yeah. spot and have choices in, in soma right? right get it done by the yeah. summer right get it done and that means you're starting now right in essence you have to try yeah to, i know i know, I know, I know. but if we got too a, much people yeah. listening or watching that they want no, to yeah, get an no, office i just i no, want to know yeah, the no. people if they start by the summer they take a little bit of time to make up their mind and they get going before the summer they, 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 that they're getting ahead they're still getting ahead enough that they don't have to panic right I yeah, and like you know, parents there. are settled in, schools yeah. are opening back up, so like yeah. it's just a really yeah. good time um, yeah. that like people are like kind of locked in on where they want to be for the next yeah. year. Or two. Yeah. So 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 yeah. so Jamie, tell us about New York. Yeah. So like I remember watching Million Dollar Listing, and 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 this started <laughs> happening, and you could you could get like a beautiful uh, eleven room penthouse in uh, in, in the meatpacking district for half yeah, the yeah. price of today, right? You'd walk around, right. uh, what's it called? North of the Meatpacking? What's that area called? You're going like West Village? No, no, north of it. Like what's, what's the whole new area? The whole new area where the office oh, Hudson Yards is well, Yeah, well, Hudson, Hudson Yards, Yards was like cricket. Yeah, it was like yeah, yeah, Soma yeah, yeah. for a while, right? It was like Soma yeah, yeah. there, but now it's, everything's back. Folks yeah. went home. And let's talk about Atlanta, Austin, and Miami where folks actually kept working in the office. But what's is it true? What's the tech scene like? Who and you work a lot with tech, tech focused media. It sounds like they're back mm -hmm. at the office with a passion, right? They, they are, I think, um, for sure, for sure. I think the, 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 the level of activity, I know you want to talk about the, it's called the household names, but in reality, we have to, because they're the ones that drive growth and they're the ones that the mid markets then follow. So okay. when you see, you know, the big tech companies further committing to New York as of over this period of time, uh, for the past 20, 20 plus months. And then in addition, they are continue to grow in, in this respective market has a full on trickle down effect to the mid market growth companies. So you, so I like the Roku's TikTok, all these companies have kind of established themselves and are further growing in this market. And then, you know, taking it one step further, then you go to the next level, level of growth that they're, you know, planning that, that, you know, 300 to 500 seats of full growth mode. Right. Um, so it, in New York, it's, it's, a, it's such a unique market. Um, you know, I'm biased because, you know, this is the, the, the market I live and breathe and I, I'll, I'll put this market against many other markets, but the diversity of the market, it helps us because of the, the, the industry specific from the legal sector to the financial sector and the, and the tech sector, all they, they support one another, right? So yep. you're seeing this continued growth and what Between what's the data saying? Like, what if I if, so, if I, again if I'm on the side yeah. if I've been on the sidelines during well, all we'll of get, this, right? What does the well, data I, say? Well, this good things for you to understand, right? Right, like the on like when we 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 try to the way you have to look at the market is that new leases, okay, in this market for a period of time over a hundred thousand feet, which is a, of significant size. Yeah, like, that's this, the cost are, of these are big deals. I know. Yeah, these these are you know we're looking at like almost like four to five x. Uh, as many transactions closed in this period of time since last year. Okay, let's so, slow down. For folks that haven't read in an office yet, so 100,000 street is what I call super unicorn phase or big company, right? You, you're not, you don't need, a, yeah. even if you raise it a billion, you may not have enough employees to need 100,000 square feet, right? <laughs> but so. but the, the take it. You're pre-IPO. You're probably yeah. pre-IPO. You're probably pre-IPO well, at that point, it's, right? It's an important factor because, you know, as these companies are established, they are yeah. looking past the forest, right? They're looking at opportunity, sure. being opportunistic and also point. being, and being in a, it's, a, you know, the drive is this flight to quality chase right yep. now, like it, the, the better, better opportunities, better assets are being leased faster at a yep. very high rent. And, you know, so all of a sudden that space becomes a, taken off the market pretty quickly. Yeah. And uh, granted, you know, there's other, obviously product that 
is being built and being uncovered. But the market that, you know, when you when you start to look at core concentration of tech, which we define as Midtown South, right? Let's call it 34th Street, Canal, River to River's core market. Yeah. Soho, Chelsea, Union Square, Flatiron, right? In that market, from like over year to year, there's 500, let's call it 500,000 square feet of leases, which is about, it's up 65%, approximately 65% from a year ago. Okay. And that, so that's, that's broken out, right? When you break that out, those are, those are five, 10, 15, 20,000 square foot tenants. So those are tenants that are from 20 people to 150 people. Well, those are so, the offices most of us want, right? The five to 20K yeah, right. square exactly. feet, right? That's what exactly. we want, right? So, so that market, right, is, is still the most competitive market for, 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 for called high growth tech. As you start to establish yourself um, in that market, it just gets more difficult to find opportunities given the lack of product. So you yep. then have to kind of push boundaries, Hudson Yards, downtown. You kind yep. of have to kind of spread your wings a little bit. But like every other startup's product. doing. But yes, I hear you. Okay, so let me just, yeah. for folks that are listening or watching, <laughs> let's say I want five to 10,000 square feet. Like mm -hmm. as you're growing at Series mm -hmm. A, if you can afford it, that's what you want. How mm -hmm. hard is it today um, to, get, to find a, for you to find a couple spaces I might like? Is it, how hard is it on a scale of one to 10? It, it, it's, it's, you still, there's, there's still plenty of space. There is plenty. It there is, is plenty yeah. of inventory. Okay. There is, there's, there's and when will, when, when will the answer be like pulling out my hair type yeah. like 2019? When will we be there in the yeah. summer, I, I, in the let's, fall? When will we yeah. be there? Yeah. Let's go summer, fall. I, I'll follow, I'll, I'll follow Justin on that. Let's take right. the same, same path. So, um, so I think what we're going to see is once this, once the schools get, you know, once the turn for the schools happens yep. again, you start to sell that you start to see that acceleration happen because people know where they're going to be in September. Yep. So yep. Um, you, Jamie brought up a good point. So, you know, uh, a lot of the last two years have been um, big tech um, doing more leasing in a period of time than they have ever in history. Um, we, uh, our data shows 18.4 million square feet of leases by big tech, Amazon, you know, um, uh, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, uh, yep. Microsoft, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. That's 312 football fields of offices yep. in the U S yep. for office. Um, and it's because they can look two, three, four years beyond. And that's why, you know, a lot of um, the folks in the Sasser community, you know, some are in that category, but a lot of them are like, okay, well, I, I can't look, you know, two years, I can't lease a space two years down the line, you know, like I, that, that doesn't make any sense. And that's why we're saying that like over the next kind of six to nine months are going to be really critical, um, you know, because the, the world is opening up, but there's still a lot of good opportunities for really mm -hmm. amazing spaces. Um, you know, uh, um, you know, raises a hundred people, right? We have 7,000 square feet in San Francisco and it's, you know, gorgeous space, ground level on a park that we got for a great deal. Um, there's, there's definitely a good amount of those and still built out and like, you don't have to invest a ton in the space. Um, but that's, what's going to be accelerated now that we're like through this because, you know, CEOs and, you know, people building companies can see three, six months in advance. Exactly. So, and I think to touch upon, I know we talked about before, like the distributed workforce, where we, I think you mentioned, like you starting to see people spread out, like where they're working and, you know, in different parts of the, of the country. Out of that, let's call it 18 million square feet, 15% is in New York. So it's still a big concentration of, of, yeah. of, of a stat that um, is not going away. And there's, there are, there's kind of more, as, as we're seeing more, more of these high growth tech companies we're seeing firsthand fully committing now and looking at this opportunity as, as like maybe these are this is where we want to bring the talent because we're 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 we need to start mentorships we need to start like like building a a company together and that's why you start to see this significant growth it sounds like maybe one thing on twitter that may be actually real is that folks in new york tech and media may be more aggressive in getting back faster than in the Bay Area, right? Yeah, and it's, yeah, you, but, I, but, I, I think you're right. But, and I think, oh, sorry, Jessica. I mean, almost by twofold, right? I mean, twofold, um, yeah. like, uh, Jamie, what, would you say kind of around 60% occupancy is like pre, pre, Peak. you know, pa pandemic? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we just heard the CEO of uh, 
uh, Google talk about their over 50% capacity um, in their New I York. I did not market. know that. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, you know, you, you are seeing that. And I think that like, again, I do think that the Bay Area is just slower. It's not like not going to happen. Um, and, and so yep. but like New York, and then, you know, you, you were mentioning like other markets around the country that had less mandates uh, over time or got rid of them sooner. Yeah. Atlanta, um, Miami, stuff like that. What are you seeing in Atlanta, Miami, Austin? Like what's, what's, what's you seeing there? Um, like huge growth, you know, um, uh, 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 Facebook just did the biggest office lease in history in Austin. Um, yeah. it like, you know, residential numbers are crazy. Um, the, I, the, the, the growth of, 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 um, rental rates in Miami is insane. And they're, you know, trying Crazy. to build buildings, you know, as fast as, as possible. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be spending some time there soon as well. Um, hopefully I can make your event. Um, Good. but, um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, like the office. So we were looking at studies from, um, companies that a badge, you know, companies. So like that they like, you know, um, you have the real data, swipe. The swipe. they have the real yeah. data. Um, so on average, about 30%, 33% across the country um, are, are, are back in regularly, um, according to like, you know, the badge data. Yeah. Um, but, but definitely in kind of like, you know, Southern states, it, it, it's, it's much higher, right? It brings up, brings up the average. Um, and, you know, but like places like Houston, I think is, is, is across 40, the board, yeah, of, yeah. Uh, you know, almost to 50%. Um, right. And so that's where the fascinating data is, is, you know, um, where, where um, the pandemic yeah. has kind of been over and people are, there's been no restrictions. Like, you know, you do see folks just, that like want to get back. Yeah, just to give you, just to kind of level set that, right? So we're in the, we're in the single digits in, in, in New York, right? Through single digits of, of, of occupancy. Oh, oh swipe, at the peak, right? at the peak or nadir, however we look at it. Yeah, single digits, right. yeah. Oh, right, and now, and, and as Justin said, you know, at what's called, peak of occupancy is like 60 percent or so right and now if, if new york is hovering on 30 percent, that's 50 percent back yeah that's a good way to sub, let, let's wrap this yeah. point up it's new york's 50 percent back right for folks trying to get their arms around it that's a really great way to see it right that's and accelerating, right? And accelerating right mm -hmm. so it took me yeah. that was my thesis it took me a while to figure this out we were trying to figure out what to do with our little sf office which we've been into four times in the last two years but then I realized it's not New York, but like we just should just keep it because it'll, yes. in six months yeah. we won't be able to find it. There's just no, that's right. No, we just won't. We're, we're not paying much for it. It's so pretty. It's built. I out. love that office. And it's like you know we don't use it, but like one of our guys is there today. It's like we'll never like if we'll never go back, and it will ever we'll never go back to SF if we let it go. But and, but that, and that's a good number. We're halfway yeah. back and accelerating. So that kind of ties to find your office in six months if you want to do it in a low drama way. That's what we're saying. Yeah. The data supports I, it. it. It's the data supports it. I think, and we saw it. You kind of saw it when you're following the residential side of the market. Yeah. Of the 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 you know the activity level and pricing was was changing in favor of the owner or the landlord quickly. Yep. So once you start to see people coming back and wanting to be back to live in the city, that then kind of you know start to move the needle on occupancy. Got so let me just hit two more things before we run out of time. Oh, one, okay. one's, one's a little bit nerdy, but back in the day when I was briefly a, a VP at Adobe, Adobe was the last tech company to go from offices to shared workspaces, right? And okay. I moved in there and I'm like, offices, like they're so quiet, they suck. It's just such an old company. Then I realized, man, it's great for engineers. Nice. It's great for, it was a mistake. And I was a VP or the most junior SVP. And I sat with the finance team. They said, the reason we're doing this is we can increase density 40%. That's right. Okay. That was, it had nothing to it do with- It was a with cost the, issue. 40% they could jam more into the two towers at Adobe as Adobe went. So related question, how does load work on spaces? How many square feet do I need for how many employees that are there? How many, cause are we jamming? Are we going to jam even more people into our office? Is it less? How does this load- cool. And headcount per square foot math work in this new world because I don't know what the formula is anymore. So, um, oh man, a lot to unpack here. So, yeah. um, what's fascinating, um, the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics just just published some really incredible numbers, and you know, Harvard Business Review, Business Insider, Bloomberg all covered it. Only five point five percent of businesses have reduced their their square feet um, relative to how many employees they have um, in, in the country. And um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but what we're seeing is that like, and, and by the way, 
love it or hate it, the vast majority of companies are going hybrid, right? Like, yeah. you know, we, we did a study of the top 160 YC, most valuable uh, YC companies um, published last year. Uh, 81% of them are going hybrid in some form or fashion. Like, but let's be clear that, and I think some of this is sad, just like offices were sad. That means you're not going to get a dedicated desk. Okay, that's not true. Well, that's, that's not that, true. To me, that's the pro. That's the one as so, an old timer. Yeah. I'm not willing to go to non dedicated uh, desks. Oh, trust, because trust me. We we have I thought we plummet have, in productivity to do no, no. for hoteling, right? A yeah. So, so we we have we we definitely um, go back and forth on this at race too. Yeah. Um, and you know sometimes it just kind of happens that way that you kind of just go to the same one. Every, well, the every finance day. folks are going to tell you you'll save a lot of money hoteling, right? And with and with hot hot desks. Right. right. So, yeah, so, so, so what, what, what a lot of our clients are doing is um, like, basically you have like every employee has to kind of put a stake in the ground for six months or nine months or 12 months sometimes and say like, I'm a in office, which means three or more days a week yep. or hybrid flex. And then like you get a hot desk and then remote first means that like, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you can pop in and out when you want, but like, you know, and there's some, some really cool tools. Like one of our clients Envoy does a lot of this stuff, but like, um, and so that's how a lot of companies are doing it. It, 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 it really depends on, um, how often you're going to be in there. Okay. So 60% um, you know, more so, time you get a dedicated desk. This is becoming a pseudo standard, right? It, it, it's, um, yeah. Right. And that, that makes sense. That way you can plan around it. Right. Um, but is, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you're going to cram more poor, Four employees into the same amount of space. So uh, yeah, we're not seeing a drop. <laughs> we're not. No, you're not. It's a, yeah, in, it's, um, uh, uh, square feet per person. It's still, I think, what 200 in New York, 150 square feet in San Francisco. It varies um, um, market to market. Um, but we're not seeing a huge drop. And like, I think you know, um, like a lot of people ask us, like, are we actually going to be able to do better work or you know, in in hybrid offices, right? Well. Like I would argue that hybrid offices are are maybe a move into being able to do our best work because you know they're going to have dedicated quiet times they're going to have like communal space that are like separate they're going to be designed that way like you know some folks are just going to have you do focus work outside of the office and then come in for like you know the serendipity and the fun um, and so I think that there's going to be a, an amazing um uh improvements to design to like kind of really figure out that balance um but that has been a surprising thing i like i think um it, yeah we, we did something early in the in the pandemic and i had predicted that like it was actually going to be a little bit more per square foot per person um because it just takes a lot to design. i thought the same <laughs> um but yeah you, you know, might need you might need, you might need more office space to handle the, the, the ebb and flow and plots of injection the right? collaboration per, per, per person yeah. right yeah um, per person, I, think, right? I think that we're also going to yeah. see um you know uh uh and i think you alluded to this like small smaller concentration but like a, a really interesting um result of all this is that like you know companies are going to have more offices not less well that was the penultimate point I wanted to put out is the rise of what we used to call satellite offices, but I don't even know if that's the right term anymore, right? Yeah, um, yeah sure. Hub satellite offices. Hubs, yes. right? so, yeah, um, Everyone uh, has groups of employees in multiple places now that we didn't used to have, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, you know, is, one of is, our yeah. one of our clients, Mercury, which is like a really, really successful um, you know, fintech company. Um, and they publish this so I can share it. Like um, you know, around 100 employees, they had six off four, you know, five or six offices. And that would have never happened earlier. Like, you know, we have six offices I and mean, we're a little bit different, as you know, but like company, <laughs> smaller companies are having more offices sooner um, yeah. because, you know, they can have four or five folks together and like, you know, they want to spend some time together. Um, and and like, you know, we're doing a lot of really cool stuff around yes. um, our products to help with that. And I think there's two, two layers that I think our, our clients are realizing that, you know, in terms of the war for talent, they have to accommodate this, right? The talent is now, they have an opportunity to take talent from any parts of the world or any parts of the country. So you're, you're starting to create that as the, you know, they want to, you know, have that ability to retain that, that talent. The second thing, we were literally just on the phone with a, a high growth fintech company this week, and we started to talk about workplace and understanding what their vision is. And they have some significant groups, several hundred employees of growth in the next 24 months and the head of the head of workplace said i need to a dedicated seat per employee okay and that 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 
it has everyone has a physical space. If they're not there, maybe they're there. Maybe they're there four days a week. Maybe they're there three days a week. Right, but, but they're like me. Space. They they believe That's music to philosophically. Jason's ears, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so just to finish that point up, does that? And then I want to hit one last thing, and then we'll break. But sure. My intuition once we at the beginning of all this was startups would take more space as as hybrid companies because if you kept your HQ, you would need more offices to handle more of your team. And that actually not only space, but and the cost would go up, right? Because even if, no matter what happens, three times the offices cost right. more. We're paying even our little team, which doesn't get we're paying, I'm paying twice in rent what I did before all of this. Right. So as founders. Uh, and, and but there's a handful of startups I work with that pay no rent now, right? But I, yeah. on average, do you think this is going to drive costs up because we need more spaces and there's not less effective density in our headquarters? Um, it's hard to tell. I mean, so many things are um, inflated in pricing and things like that. Construction costs, furniture, everything's taking longer. Everything's more expensive. So, so like that stuff will level out. Um, and then I think that like the other thing that we've seen is that. Um, if the strategy was just take as much space as possible, concentrate in one place, um, we, like companies have been really effective at like subleasing, you know, floors uh, to other companies. And so, you know, um, like uh, Brian Armstrong had a great post, um, the CEO of Coinbase. He's like, I want, you know, um, one floor in 10 cities rather than 10 floors in one city. Right. And yeah, so, yeah, we want that. I think it costs more than 10x. Doesn't it cost a little bit more to maintain 10 offices? I think it might cost 13x or 14x <laughs> to achieve that vision. That's my guess. It, it, it depends. I don't, I don't think it's that much because, you know, it just um, depends where you, you are. Know, office space, the cost of office space in San Francisco and New York are so great and so meaningfully yeah. lower. But they're soft costs, right? They're, they're soft costs. You know, there's there's people, there's, you know, um, it's it's one of the things that I was most excited to kind of build um through um and i don't want to you know make this an advertisement out raise but like we, like we <laughs> bet on like the complexity it's just more complex to manage 10 leases than it is more complex two. that's part of your it software is. solution but totally. it, it the full i think the fully burdened cost of 10 offices is more than one okay the complex that i'm not saying your lease costs are but yes, you add I just the soft think, cost, yeah it's complicated I just, yeah. right it's complicated agreed, right agree and you guys are helping to solve it. okay last very last question related to that Cool. Just for some fun on raise as a startup, okay? And 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 Justin, you're a second time founder. You co-founded 42 <laughs> Floors before right. this, which old timers listening to this may remember as an initial play trying to combine technology with brokerages, right? Uh, and, it was like uh, Zillow for commercial real estate. Yeah, and and you're you own the brokerage side, which did really well. The technology side competed with the brokerage. It was kind of a mess in the end. <laughs> yeah, but you. So and raise was kind of like a redo of that, but but be a lot align align with brokers rather than compete with them. Okay, but now since then, Open Door has gone IPO. The world's yeah. changing. Um, what I don't think in commercial real estate we will get beyond brokers because I don't I, I don't think Airbnb works for a hundred thousand square feet, right? Two, but but the world will change. So where is it like? Where is this going, commercial real estate? You you are one of the vanguards in making it easier, in presenting stuff, yep. in managing offices, in making the process less uh, a, a, pro, a process where I pulled out my hair as a founder less frictionful. Right. But where, where what's the next level for technology here for for founders and tech office space? Where does it go from here? Will there be? I don't think there'll be an open door, but is there an open door, or what's going to well, happen? I mean, uh, you know, you could argue that the closest comparison to open door um, on you know, they're buying and selling of homes, right? But like on the leasing side, we work, right? Like we work kind of provides flexibility, um, one click, you know. Um, but niche, but it's niche, right? But yeah, yeah, keep yeah, going, I yeah. Mean, um, it's a know, good point, uh, yeah. It's not as big as it, perhaps it was destined to be in 2019, but like they right size <laughs> and like they provide flexibility and, 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 and even liquidity, you know, like you're not having to do long-term leases. In three out of the six markets, we start with a WeWork and sometimes still in it sometimes. Um, but, you know, um, and even with all the open doors and everything, uh, residential brokerages um, have withstood the test of time. You know, the, the vast majority of transactions happen, happen with brokers. Um, you know, on the residential term, side, yes, but it's always hard to tell the beginning of the curve, right? Right. So right, my right. whole question is, what happens to open door type companies in 2027? Not today, because that be, we never. Yep. It's hard to see the the, curve, the slope of the curve, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think com commercial is important in some very different way, in in very important ways, right? The 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 deals are bigger and more complex. 
Yeah, um, yeah. You know, exactly. Uh, this... Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you're, the, the level of, of peer or, or individual we are dealing with in this type of transaction are, you know, CFOs, COOs, founders, the sophisticated, you know, group of individuals yes. that are driving that process. So uh, the human interaction and being able to like look across the table or, or, or build that bond, you can't replace. So agree, but it's people this, are going to look, yeah. are going to try more kids at Y yeah. Combinator are going to look at brokerage fees and say, look, if I can apply technology to that, like, like, a, like a Brex does, right. And other things, if I can buy some technology to that and take a, and automate just even a half of that away. Right. I yeah. could build this. Why you guys are thinking about this too, as a startup, yeah. right. Well, I mean, it's look, in your like, head. We, I'm just asking five years from now, <laughs> can someone grab some of these brokerage fees and flip them into software or, or is it not possible? Right. How much so, can you I mean, do and like, raise? We think, of, we, we think about it very similar, right? Like we're yeah. taking a lot of processes that like, you know, have been done the same way for decades and, you know, Millennium. provide a, a really strong level of automation. And then now we get to build things that, that could not be done um, it, without, the, without the platform that it powers. Um, you know, there, there are um, a lot What's of- What's an example of something you things. can do now you couldn't do before with Raise or otherwise? What's an example of something you can do for, for commercial uh, office space? I mean, uh, one example that we talked about, right? Like um, running your entire real estate portfolio from end to end um, on a platform, right? You're, you have so 10. Radically simplifying multi-office management. Totally, right? like for, you're for, searching for, for oh, four yeah. different Companies. offices. Radically simplifying it, right? All of your leases, you're collaborating with all of your different teams and vendors. It's it's really amazing. Um, but like what like I was saying, I think that um, because of the complexity and, and, and the size of deals, um, and also we're talking about leasing, right? And so, you know, there's just a lot of moving parts with leasing as mm -hmm. opposed to like, you know, open door with buying and selling. It's like it's a transaction yeah. on either side. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, with broker fees, look, like we never say it doesn't cost the company anything, but landlords pay the fees across the entire United States. And like, it's a rounding error for what they get in rent and, and the value that they provide. So um, I think mm -hmm. that, I think that in commercial real estate, things are uniquely suited um, for the best brokers. And I think that the innovation is going to happen around how the work is done, yeah, the, how the work exactly. is, it, 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 it is the transparency, in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and so that's the big bet we're making and, and it's going out pretty well. Okay. Since we're out of time, let me just summarize a couple of things. Um, in markets like New York, we're already 50% back. We may, in Miami, it's off the charts, other places. <laughs> so if certainly if you're in New York or North and you've, and you've, not sure you want to go, but you think you might want to get an office again, get it now, like, because we're already, we're 50% and worse, we're, 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 we're trending upwards. San Francisco, you still got a little time, but, but there's more going on than you think. We're leasing more space in 2021 than 2019. There's capacity and the offices are quiet, but get that office done by the summer I, I <laughs> if definitely you agree. want. With, and, with, um, and, and there's more technology here. Look at things like Rays and others to help you manage multiple offices because we're all figuring out this hybrid thing thing together now, right? Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, if we want to learn more, we go to Rays.com. Is that where we should go? Rays.work. Rays.work. Rays. 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 Right. Rays.work. Yep. R-A-I-S-E. Rays.work. W-O-R-K. Does that run on the blockchain, the dot .work uh, TLD? It does not. Do we know? No, no. It's just a regular, we're, it's just a regular old yeah. uh, URL. We're, uh, we're bits and atoms, um, but we're, okay. we're not on the blockchain. All right. Well, we Rays.eth I will look at, but Jamie, congrats on joining to run New York. Justin, thanks for the time. Thank and, you. Um, Appreciate uh, the time. We'll, we'll, we'll use you guys. We'll, we'll check in every six months or so to check the barometer of where you know Fantastic. the future of work is going all right jason always a pleasure man